Hello and welcome to this video. So in this video, we'll talk about some of the interview questions on Hive. So let's get started. So Hive versus SQL. So this is one of the very important questions that have been asked across all the interviews on Hive. So what are the difference? Right. So SQL and Hive. So SQL is extract transform load. It is an ATL process. So you look, extract the data, you apply the transformations and then you load the data. Hive is ELT. So you extract the data first, you load it and then you apply transformation. So that is what Hive is. Schema is enforced on write for SQL. So let's say you created a schema uh, with uh, two columns and you're trying to insert the data with three columns. Then it will give you an error, which is the schema is che different than what you are doing. So that's where this SQL is like schema enforced on write. When you're trying to write something, it has to match the schema. On the other hand, if you're writing something which does not match, it will be inserted. There won't be an error in high. But when you enforce or when you do a read, that's where the schema is enforced in high. So that's the difference between these two. No serialized data support in SQL. So uh, serialized data is not supported, but Hive supports serialized data. SQL is good for small data, uh, but Hive supports a huge amount of data really well. Hive SQL only supports structured, but Hive supports structure and semi-structure. So those are the difference between Hive and SQL. So very, very important question. What is the default Hive meta store? So Hive has a default database uh, to store the metadata. It's called Derby. So that's the default database. What are the different types of table? So we have two tables. One is manage, one is external. Now what is manage? What happens? Uh, you create a table with manage, right? So let's say you created a table with manage, right? So what happens when you drop the table, the backend director, which is associated with the table will also get deleted. So this is usually we don't use it in our projects or we just use it for uh, staging purpose, but external table is when date table is dropped back and directory won't be dropped so table only uh, structure will be there so typically we use external table in all our production environments or even dev how do you load the data in have so these are the uh, some of the methods how you can load so you can use load data local which is basically loading a file from a local environment into the table or if you you can use load data in path uh, this would be your data from your hdfs now how do you skip a header rows from a table so let's say you are you are creating a external table this is the location this is where but this uh, date this file has a header so you need to provide a table properties to skip that header so this is where you provide that option what is Hive Meta Store? So it is a central repository of Apache metadata. It stores the metadata for Hive table like the schema, the location, partitions in a relational database. It also provides client access to this information with the help of Meta Store API. So you can call the APIs to get this data. Why Hive does not store metadata information in HDFS? Because uh, we mentioned that the default meta store is Derby, which is a data. So why not in HDFS? Hive stores metadata information in meta store using RDBMS instead of HDFS, right? Uh, the main reason is to achieve low latency because HDF read write operations are time consuming. So if you read and write from HDFS, it will be more time consuming. And that's the reason why the metadata is not stored there because you need to have faster access to metadata. What is the difference between sort by and order by? See, both of them are to sort the data. But what is the main difference? So sort by, we generally sort by instead of uh, order by when you have huge data set because sort by sorts the data using multiple reducers whereas order by sorts the data using single reducer so if you are using sort by you, you are using multiple reduce so parallelism right if you are using order by you are using a single reducer so always make sure you use a sort by why do you perform partitioning hive so not only hive right anywhere even in database your traditional 
partitioning is a very important concept so partition provides granularity so instead of scanning the entire data set you can only scan the partition data relevant partition data so that will improve the performance it will reduce the latency of the query what are the different types of partitions so we have two partitions dynamic and static <coughs> so uh, in, in the static we have something called a static load partition and we have static insert part so static partition load partition what happens we provide the partition name to which the data must be loaded so this is manual like if you see here right so we have created an external uh, partition table okay now when you load the data you say hey load this data into this partition table this is a partition name so you are manually giving the partition name so that is what your static load partition is static insert partition is inserting the data from one table into another table so like from non-partition table to a partition table so you create a non-partition table so this is your non-partition table uh, it has all the other data like uh, the location and everything so it has the entire data it is not partition now now what we do is we use the load data to load this data or any other method right then you create a partition table so let's say the partition is on country right now the, all the data is present here now from this table you have to insert into this table so that is your static insert partition so you say insert into the partition table what is a partition you want to insert and then from where you want to select the data from a non-partition table so that is how your static insert partition works then we have a dynamic load partition the same concept first data is loaded into partition non-partition table and from non-partition table into the partition table now this is very similar to your static insert right you create a non-partition table then you create a partition table then you insert the data from non-partition to partition but the difference is here you're mentioning what is a partition data what is a partition column so you are inserting into this partition right your country equal to india so you're manually doing but here you don't do that so what you do is you don't give any partition here like it just gives you a partition column but you don't specify any value you just select the columns and whatever partitions is there it will automatically get created so that's the difference between your static inset and dynamic partition what is the difference between partitioning and bucketing so partitioning we have already seen is a way of dividing a large data into smaller and more manageable parts based on values of one or two columns or more columns the partition key is used to create a directory hierarchy that represents a set of partition scheme and each partition stored as a separate directory with its own set of files so basically different uh, folders will be created for partition inside it you will have files bucketing is a way of dividing data with a partition then a partition into more manageable chunks called buckets so for example let's say we have a table it has an id column so id is 1 to 100 okay so let's say here i want to divide this data into five files for this we can use the concept of bucketing okay so we would give the id column and ask it to be divided into five buckets so how this is populated data is populated into each bucket by doing modulo operation okay so let's take an example or let's understand this uh, in a diagrammatic representation so you have this data here uh, you have data from one two three four five six all the way up to 100 now what we are saying is uh, you create buckets five buckets so let's say one bucket two three four five okay now each of this data you will do a modulus operation like number of buckets is five right so you say one modulus five so whatever be the uh, value so all that value so let's say this would be uh, one right now this data will go and sit here maybe uh, let's say this data will this mod all the data whose modulus is one will sit here modulus two will sit here modulus three will sit here 
model s4 will sit here model s0 will sit here okay so that way if you want to query any data let's say i want to query uh 99 id now what will happen with this is 99 uh if i divide if i do a modulus of 5 okay so what will happen here is this will be 4 right this will be 4 modulus of 4 so it knows that this 99 is present in this bucket so instead of scanning all these buckets it will directly go and fetch this data so that's the advantage of bucket right all the records whose modulus 0 will be in one bucket and similarly in other so partition is useful and you want to filter the data based on partition key right but bucketing is when you need to join and aggregate data on specific columns if you want to just look for a specific value for the column then you can use bucket you have a table name country there's a table name country now when you created the table it had four columns the source team mentioned that the columns may be dropped or added so how do you design the table right so what they are saying is the column schema may change in that case we need to use something called as avro we need to store the data in avro so and uh, the schema will be present here so anytime there is a change in schema you can just update this schema here it will automatically get picked up so anytime you hear a schema evolution schema changes go for avro can you execute the hive commands in a shell script yes you can do so you put all the commands in a dot hql like uh, i am putting all the commands in hive dot hql and then you run it using this command hive hyphen f file one dot hql so file one dot hql will contain all the hive commands i have two tables employee and department i have to join these two tables department table size is very small compared to the employee table how do i join it see join it basically inner join and outer join right so there is a concept called map join so you have to apply this map join so what map join does it whatever is a smaller table it will copy all the data from smaller table into each node of larger table so that way uh, what will happen is you don't have to do the shuffling you can minimize the shuffling so the data is available with for each data node to join the data is already available because the data is copied so that is going to improve the performance okay another question i have a data in hdfs location we have created a hive table this table is partition when i query my data i don't see any data when i query my table i don't see a data so what is saying is so there is some hive location uh, there is some uh, data present in a hdfs location this is partition and uh, now they created a table okay they created a hive table uh partition table okay partitioned table and they're pointing to this hdfs but when I, when they queried the data here they are not seeing anything they're not seeing any data no data but the data is here what could be the reason so when you create a partition table partitions are generated and stored in hive metastore so if you are trying to create a partition table on the existing data partitions are not automatically registered so you need to register or recover the partition for this you need to run this command msck report table table name the hive table so once you do this partitions will be automatically registered in the metadata and then you, when you query it you will be able to see the data okay i have an application that runs every month it does two things it loads the data from hdfs subdirectory it creates a current month folder and loads the data into that month it creates a partition for the hive table okay so for the month of june the application was able to ingest the data into the june folder however it was unable to create the partition on hive when i query it for june i don't see any data okay so what they are saying is uh they have one application whatever be the application it ingests the data it, it ingests the data so it will create a, a folder here hdfs folder so every month so this month if i run let's say if it is uh, 
uh, Jan month the folder for Jan will be created uh, if it is for February a folder for February will be created and so on and at the same time there is a hive table right so this hive table what will happen is uh, hive table will add this partition so let's say January partition it will add it here uh, February it will add it here so that way when you do a hive query for February you will see the data from February okay now what he's saying is uh, for June for June there is a file uh, there is a partition file that is created in HDFS but somehow the high partition is not registered here so what to do so when you query for june you're not getting the data because high partition is not created for that you can use this command you can add a partition manually alter table partition uh, transaction which is a uh, table name add partition whatever and then month and where is the location what is the name of the partition and where is the location so this way you can manually add it how do you improve the performance here yeah, we have seen partitions instead of scanning the entire data set you can only scan part of the data set with partition we have seen bucketing that is also one thing which improves the performance different types of joins map join bucket join sort merge join uh, test engine so this is basically in memory computation uh, you can basically change your engine to test it will automatically improve the performance so there's nothing that you have to do it is something in build but this is one thing that improves your performance vectorization so by default high will process one row at a time okay but if you want to process more than one row you can enable vectorization so if you enable vectorization it will process 1024 rows at a time so to enable you have to give this command high vectorize execution enable true other thing you can do is parallel execution if you have queries that run independent of each other you can make them to run in parallel by enabling this one hive dot execution dot parallel equal to true so this way you can improve the performance of hive so i hope this these questions are helpful to you it helps you to refresh your memory about hive thanks you for uh, listening to this hive video and i hope this is helpful to you and i'll see you guys again next time